Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to the extended release version of the Capsule Production Podcast. Today, my guest is a fourth year pharmacy student at the University of Florida College of Pharmacy. She spoke with me on the immediate release version of the podcast and laid out the basics on how to land not one, but 10 residency interviews. On this episode, she will give us some details about how she dealt with back-to-back interviews and a literal ice storm. Without further ado, my guest, Jackie Kilsgar. The interview process was long and stressful. I was pretty much flying every other day to an interview. I had two to three a week, so I had lots of them. It's almost hard to keep track of all of them. They blend into each other. Two to three a week? Pretty much. Wow. Yeah. So how were you like mentally preparing? Like you had one and then like the next day you'd have another one? So like how Yeah, were you so I that? prepared just for the one that was next. So the day before I'd look at the program, remind myself why I liked it in the first <laughs> place, different details about it. Sometimes you think when you go to an interview, they'll ask you questions like about their program, like, oh, what's your favorite part of it? And they're going to ask you that. Why do you want our program? So you have to remember the key points that you want. But they're not going to ask things like, what's our mission statement? And, you know, those things that you sometimes think they'll ask in an interview. So I stopped looking at those things after the first two and just focused on the different details. And really what you want to do for interviews is figure out what questions you want to ask, because that's what you get all the time. Every Do you have questions? Do you have questions? I'm like, I don't always have questions, so you almost need to formulate questions enough to cover the entire day of the interview process. So yeah, you want to look like you're prepared and you're not just like along for the ride. Like, yes, okay. like you're actually invested in their program and really want to know more about it. Did you ever like stalk their webpage or whatever for their school or like you I was, said you looked at the mission statement? I yeah, know. I was on their, they were saved pretty much on my desktop <laughs> every day I'd recheck it and see if there's any details that I forgot um, sometimes they were older so there wasn't updated things so I'd be like so on your website said this what's the real deal or something <laughs> and there's also details that may not be in it that you maybe have gotten at mid-year but you wanted to ask about now that you've actually looked at that pamphlet they gave you and there may not be anything in it about certain questions you have like how much you're gonna make or if there's you know, insurance included kind of thing. So sometimes the little things are important too, and it's not, it's never, there's never a dumb question. So if you want to ask little things like, when do I get my first paycheck? <laughs> Those are actually things that they don't mind answering and are important really in order to live. So they're okay answering those things. That's good to know. Cause like I, I was here back and forth, like it's rude to ask about that, but again, that's kind of, like you said, really important to know. Like you want to know where your money is coming from if you have to pay for an apartment or your insurance. Like I would never think to ask for that. Yeah, Yeah. I wouldn't have be, it never was one of my first questions, but it was always something if I wanted to know, I always made sure I asked. Like, so how often do you guys get paid? Is there insurance attached? How long after starting do you get insurance? Sometimes it's after 30 days, sometimes it's after the 90 day period. That's really important to know because you need to know that in order to be able to survive, really, or be able to be prepared to start it. Um, did they give you any flack, like, at any of the interviews when you asked those kinds of questions, or did you catch no. anyone, like, not prepared? Or? No, they always were able to answer. I got a, some residents were like, that's a really good question. You should always ask that question kind of thing. So you never, you never really know if you're going to get a place that says, oh, no, there is an insurance. Then it's like, okay, well, why am I here? <laughs> but... You know, that wasn't the case for all the places I applied to. They all had those simple things that I wanted to make sure that it had. And I think that's something you can normally find out, too, before you even apply. So I wouldn't have applied if I didn't think that they were going to provide me the basic necessities of a job. Gotcha. Um, So how did you pick the particular uh, residencies you applied for? You applied for 10, which is... A crazy number to me because I always hear like, oh, I'm so lucky to get like two or three. So, yeah. So yeah. really 10 is kind of small, actually. And I narrowed that down from a larger list originally. Okay. So going to ASHP mid-year in December is very important because that's when you get that residency showcase and that's where you can meet them all initially. So for that, you really need to prepare and see which ones am I interested in. And that's the hardest part is there are so many, especially if you're willing to go out of state, that kind of like you know, it times a hundred what you thought you would want to look at. Yeah. So then you kind of go by hearsay or people you know, or really just kind of browsing different things you're looking for. And then you go and talk to them. And you know, they're, you're going to hear this a lot about residency. It's all about a feeling. Okay. That sounds crazy. I know it does sound crazy, but 
you do end up getting some kind of feeling from either talking to them at mid-year or when you go to the interview. You're going to possibly get different feelings. There are some places that I was totally in love with at mid-year when I met them. And then I went to the interview and I traveled there and I was like, I don't really love it as much as I thought I would love it. So that is important too, being able to really distinguish that. So it's really important to try a place out if you feel like you're going to really get along with the people, because mm -hmm. sometimes it's all about the people, but it's also about the place. And that's going to kind of get you that interview next step is, do I, I love the people? Do I love the place? Yeah, I guess that's really important because, I mean, you're taking a huge pay cut for a whole year and you're possibly living out of state and you know it's it's really stressful so I guess you really got to love what you're doing to be able to make it for at least one year to possibly two um, so what places did you apply to like yeah so I applied to UNC and Wake Forest I applied to University of Kansas which is where I'll be going mm -hmm. I applied to University of Wisconsin Ohio State University of Washington I applied to Florida Hospital Orlando and I also applied to Iowa, but that was the one I actually ended up canceling, okay. mainly just because of the flight, because I couldn't afford the flight. You know, Fair enough. <laughs> after you get all the interviews, you're booking all the flights, there's lots of money going around, and that one was the most expensive, and I was just like, that's, you know. Okay, that's kind of weird. Yeah, I was kind of, it was kind of actually lowish on my list of, you know, where I wanted to go. So I, you know, it, I don't recommend canceling any interviews. If you can swing it, do it. But if it comes to it, they're going to be understanding if, you know, there's some kind of problem financially or is, otherwise. Is that how you reached out? Just saying like, hey, I can't afford it. Yeah, because I had already committed to that interview and I felt terrible about canceling it because I didn't want to be that person. But I just financially was constrained. And when I was looking at that, that, that one was over double what all the other ones were. So wow. <laughs> I really, I just reached out and said, I'm very sorry. I had a preceptor look at my, double check my email, like, does this sound okay? I feel terrible because, you know, they selected you to do it and now you took up a spot. So that could have gone to someone else kind of thing. So I felt terrible doing it, but. At least you emailed him. He didn't just let it go by the wayside. Yeah. So. Um, so did they um, come at you like with anything weird at the interviews? Like, was there things other than questions that have you do any like tasks or like team yeah. building? So some interviews, you're going to get some horror stories too from other people, but some are all different, but they always tell you ahead of time what you're going to have. So at a few of them, I always had like a patient case that you had to work up. And sometimes they would give you resources. Sometimes you got absolutely no resources. Sometimes it was where you'd have to present the case to a physician or a clinical pharmacist. Sometimes you had to write out a soap note and turn that in and then receive no feedback on it. So when I, my very first interview, oh, someplace Boston Mass, Jen is also one that I went to and that was my very first interview. And they had me do a case and they gave you like 30 minutes to write it out with a pen on paper and then just turn it in. <laughs> and I don't know if I even finished that <laughs> one because it wasn't very much time writing it out and no resources. They literally just handed you the patient case. and You can't use your phone? Nope, or Wow. No, nothing. Okay, so it was all from memory. So I was like, okay. Uh, generally, they weren't like terrible things. It wasn't like it was some peds patient that you had sickle cell and you had no idea how to treat it, it was you know something like a uti or a pneumonia okay. things that you probably commonly got in rotations actually not something super obscure yeah and they just kind of want to see your thought process going through so writing everything out was important although the time constraint to write it out was <laughs> kind of awful but yeah i could see that 30 minutes like handwriting yeah. it too well, it's, yeah it would take me forever so. yeah that was that was definitely a throw when I got that one. Other places, they gave you like a computer and you could look it up. At Ohio State, I looked it up and then I took some notes and then I went and presented it to someone and we talked about it and they asked me questions. So you, I thought that would be more stressful, but it actually wasn't stressful at all. It was actually kind of entertaining to talk to a clinical pharmacist and be like, oh, these are the things I thought about. I thought about some things that they didn't even have written down on their answer sheet oh, wow. that right. I kind of like gave them. So that was kind of cool too. Was it like a panel thing or is it just like a one-on-one? One-on-one. -on -one. Okay. Yeah, there was one at Wisconsin. There was two of them that I talked to. And that one was funny because it was almost like a mini... OSCE, so there's three stations, and one of them was a clinical case, and you had to, like, 
out of five patients choose which the one person you wanted to treat <laughs> and there was two of them I wanted to treat and I couldn't decide so I picked one and then at the end I was like no really like who do you want to and they were like it's kind of a trick like <laughs> we just wanted to see your thought process I was like tricky, that is tricky yeah. funny but, but we talked it out so that was kind of nice I mean, that makes sense on their part to kind of want to see like what you're thinking yeah that's exactly what it was for just to see your thought process and if you could analyze things and different things like that so uh, what was your worst interview like not that it even went bad but you were just like either stressed out or they're coming out with you like weird stuff or like you were just like over it by the time you walked out the door <sighs> you know I don't think any of them I was really over it by the end they were all really long but they spaced it out enough to where it was okay I think that the Wisconsin one was a little bit more stressful actually because, so all the ones that I went to, and some of these for PGY1s will have it, but this was mainly because I was doing a two-year program, had a dinner the night before. So you actually met with a resident, maybe a preceptor, someone a dinner night before for all these places. And I missed, my flight got canceled on the way to Wisconsin, oh, so I missed that dinner. <laughs> completely it got canceled I almost didn't get there for the interview so I got there at like you know past midnight almost 1 a.m. got to my hotel had to be up at you know crack of dawn like to, to get out? there yeah I was freaking out the entire time I felt bad for missing the dinner too that's kind of important it's like I'm so sorry and then when I got there and was trying to talk to people they're like oh you're the girl from UF <laughs> that, that wasn't there last night and I was like yeah that's great inter introduction I love that and then there was the people, the preceptors that were there at the dinner came, oh, I didn't get to meet you last night. Let me talk to you now. So I was like, oh, my gosh. I didn't know how much missing that, how important that dinner is to go to. I felt so weird in the beginning. Like, first half of the day, all these people were supposed to meet me and hadn't yet. And I felt that kind of gave me a disadvantage, too. Yeah, I was going to say, that really does kind of put you at a disadvantage. You haven't met yeah. everyone. Like, you haven't gotten a feel for anyone. So you're just going in blinds. Yeah, so that was really kind of, a stressful part of the day um, it ended up that it was a stressful by the end really it was kind of a more relaxed but the longest day actually <laughs> and then afterwards they were like oh let's go to happy hour and that's some another one of those things where you're not like oh no I can't so especially since I was flying out the next day so I was like okay yeah so that one pretty much started from like dawn to dusk <laughs> so we went to happy hour and then we went to dinner with one of the residents and the other residents after oh. they came off so that one was the longest one and honestly, by the end, I was like, I just want to go back to the hotel and sleep, <laughs> please. And it was snowy and icy, and I uh, like almost slipped on ice. So I already was like, I don't know if I could walk. <laughs> so, well, at least you got like an idea of you know the surrounding yes. area. It's like, I don't know if I can survive in snow and ice. That's exactly. Right? I don't know if I can, but I'm going to have to because <laughs> yes. I'm going to Kansas. There's, there's still snow there. In Kansas, an ice storm went through. In March? It's, yes. Okay. Well, February. So that was terrible <laughs> okay. but you know it was fine the night before for the dinner and then the morning of I turn on the TV in the hotel ice storm Olivia they named it and it was coming through schools were canceled <laughs> I was like is the interview still going on they came and like picked me up from the hotel so I was like okay clearly we're still doing the interview it's still on. so you know I was like I survived the ice storm so now I feel like I survived the worst so that's actually probably a good thing I know I can live through that yeah, I mean, if you've been through an ice storm that's named, I mean, they, you got to be able to make it at any point through the that's season. That's like coming to Florida and having a <laughs> hurricane during your interview and surviving. That's awesome. Proud of you. Um, so what's something like you wish you had known before you started the whole process, like just going into these interviews that you know? I wish I would have known how stressful planning the interviews was going to be because, you know, you're really stressed applying. You're stressed about how many you're going to get but you never realize that it's gonna be most stressful trying to actually put them on your calendar, especially if you're on rotations too. I was, on, I was off for my block on, for January, but I had rotation for February, so seeing how many I was gonna miss was terrible. So that was probably the most stressful part that I didn't even think about in the process of doing it. Because as you get offers for interviews, you, you have to accept them as they come, and they're all going to come scattered. So they say, oh, pick your top three. So you pick three dates on your calendar, and the next one, oh, pick your top three, but you still haven't heard back from the last one about what's the one date. So you have all these three days you're blocking off every place. 
it's really hard to schedule everything. So that's what kind of made my schedule the most hectic and very tiring. So that was probably the thing that threw me the most about applying in general. Yeah, so just like the logistics part was just Yeah, you wouldn't yeah, you wouldn't really think that that was going to be the hardest <laughs> part. But it was the hardest part and I was never warned about that. So that would have been very nice to know. As far as interviews go, you know, I think it's you you actually expect what it's going to be like. You're going to get questions all day. It's going to be sh kind of straightforward questioning. Okay. You're going to be asked to ask questions the entire day over and over and over. You're going to run out of questions. You're <laughs> going to have to actually say at the end of the day, I don't have any more questions. Like, I'm out. And then when they contact you two weeks later to ask if you have any more questions, <laughs> you're gonna, if maybe you have questions, maybe not. But that's kind of um, important too. And I also should have started earlier, but writing things down right after the interview is very important because you're gonna forget. If you have a lot of interviews like I had, you start forgetting them. They all blend into <laughs> each other. I was trying to remember which one staffed every other weekend and which one staffed every third weekend. So just writing specifics down that you think are important about Yeah, the... kind of like a pro and con list okay. after each place. I started doing it later on on like the plane flights home. Like what were the things I really liked? What were the things that I didn't really like? And then some things that were flexible, like, oh, it's not the best, but I could deal with kind of thing. So writing those down right after really helped compare them at the end of the process. But okay. the beginning ones were blending in. <laughs> so there were some times when they asked, do you have any more questions that I did have to be like, I know I asked this, but can you remind me like what this was again? So just kind of simple things. And it can be things that you think aren't important originally, like how many days you're going to get off. Sometimes those are actually important. And when it comes down to picking one, that can be like the deal breaker sometimes. I gotcha. Um, so there's like miscellaneous things you got to think about too, like did you have to rent a car in some of those places or like... Yeah, so if you're trying to budget for the interviews, especially if you're going out of state, that's the hardest part. They're, you have to cover all expenses. I will say for Kansas, they actually paid for my hotel room and they paid for a car to pick me up from the airport. Hey, all right. So that was super nice and very helpful. But every place that I went to, you had to pay for the flight, you had to pay for an Uber to go from the airport to the hotel, you had to pay for an Uber to go from the hotel to dinner and back. Up. You had to pay for one to go to the interview and then you had to pay for one to get to the airport again. So that's a <laughs> lot of Ubers. Yeah. Now sometimes they'll offer to pick you up and drive you at least for one of those things so maybe to the dinner or pick you up from the hotel and then go to the interview but then they can't help you to get to the airport kind of thing and then also making sure you're at a hotel that's near the place but also near the airport because that can also kind of be the different thing um, a lot of places you're able to bring your luggage with you to the interview and they stored it so that you oh, could just nice. go from the hotel um, to the interview and then interview to the airport kind of thing right. so that was just something you kind of had to make sure you thought of and was prepared to do that when you went forward instead of like thinking about it after the interview or having the hotel hold your bag or something <laughs> like that so that's a complicated process yeah um, so just ending on a good note what was your favorite interview or like what was the best one you walked out and you're just like breathing a sigh of relief like it's awesome all right I think my first one because the first one's gonna be the scariest because it's your very first one, you don't know what to do, and after you finally get it done, it's like, wow, okay, the first one's done. And every interview after that, you're already in kind of interview mode, so it just, you just breeze through the rest of them. So it just kind of sets the tone. Yeah, it kind of just, you know, gets all the jitters out, gets you used to talking about yourself, gets you used to asking and answering questions, how you're supposed to in an interview. So that's the one that's the rockiest, but also the most relieving after, because it's done. Is it awkward having to like talk about yourself or like try and sell yourself, or is it, do you get kind of used to that? You know, it's not awkward. You get used okay. to it. You have, you know, everyone tells you to do an elevator pitch. Well, really, you're doing an elevator pitch plus some. They really want like kind of a little backstory. So I had a spiel, my spiel about myself every place, and I ended up using the same exact one every time. You kind of just get used to saying it, and that's your spiel the whole time. So other than that, you know, you're just going to get a lot of questions of situations, conflict re resolution, tell me about a time you did this, tell me a time about that. And you're going to have core memories or core events that you're going to talk about every time and you're going to mold to their question. I got gotcha. you. So that's kind of what you end up getting used to doing. I think if you have interviews that are really spaced out, you may not be in interview mode the entire time, but 
if they're kind of back to back, you really like it may seem stressful, but it's actually it's okay because you're just you're in that mode. Just kind of moving on that momentum. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, so, is there anything else that like just uh, sticks out for you or that you want to talk about? You know, I think the most important thing to remember is to be yourself. Okay. Uh, you're going to be spending a whole year with them, and they want to really get to know you at the interview. So why you want to maintain professionalism the entire time, you really have to be able to get comfortable with them to be yourself or make the jokes maybe you normally kind of make, at least by the end of it. And that's really important because you have to make sure you can feel like yourself because you're going to be there, you're committing to them for a year, and you also have to make sure that you fit in with them. So I wouldn't say to be afraid to just be yourself. Always be professional, of course, yeah. but relax, you know, at least by lunchtime of the interview. So let your personality come Yeah, and just bit. start acting like yourself more. You get more comfortable with them. If you can be comfortable with them for the interview, you can be comfortable with them for the rest of the year. So that's really important. I feel very grateful because I'm going to University of Kansas, and I... By, by the time I was talking to everyone, it felt like I was friends with them. We were just conversating. It wasn't an interview. We were just talking about pharmacy. That's awesome. About life. So it was kind of nice. Okay, yeah, because you just definitely don't want to like have to fake a personality for a whole exactly. year Exactly, and be stiff the entire time. And they're not going to like that either. They want to know that you can feel comfortable. So if they feel like you're comfortable, they're going to be comfortable with you too. Gotcha. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining me today. You're welcome. I'm going to post this soon, and I'll send you a link. So thanks Great. a lot. I just want to give another big thanks to Jackie for being on the podcast and sharing some of her experiences. I also want to thank Sephiros for providing the music. This song is called Celestial, and you can find it on freestockmusic.com. If you guys have any questions or comments or there's something specific you guys want to hear about on the podcast, feel free to email me at capsuleproduction1 at gmail.com. Or hit us up on Facebook at Capsule Podcast. Thanks a lot, guys.